Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at how we can use Camera Raw as a filter on a smart object in order to process our HDR images. So here you can see I'm starting in Lightroom, but of course we could also start in Bridge and go through Camera Raw. But for now, we'll start here. I have the three images selected, and I do want to make one change to them before we move over to Photoshop. So I'll click on the Develop module, and then down here under Lens Correction, I want to enable the profile correction in order to get rid of any of the distortion of the lens. I also want to remove any chromatic aberration. And I also want to apply one of the new upright modes. Now I'm going to apply the auto mode here, and you can see it makes a slight correction. If I wanted to be a little bit more heavy handed, then I could use something like the full or the vertical mode. But I actually think this looks more realistic. It's kind of a more gentle correction. But here's the thing, you'll notice that I only did this to one image. Now, I did that because I don't want to apply the upright mode, the auto command to each image individually because I might get different results on each image. Instead, I want those exact numeric transformation that I applied on the first image to be applied on the other two. So I'll go ahead and select the other two down here in the film strip, and then I'll click on it says auto sync right now, but typically it would just say sync. And I'll get the synchronize settings dialog. Here's where I'll tell it not just to synchronize the upright mode, but the actual upright numeric transformations. I also want it to apply the lens profile correction and the chromatic aberration, and then I'll click synchronize. So now the exact same settings have been applied to all three of these images. I'll tap the G key to go back to grid view, and then I'll just use the right mouse click, or on the Mac it'd be the control click, and I'll choose Edit In, and we're going to merge these to HDR Pro in Photoshop. So right now, Lightroom's going to hand off each one of these individual exposures of the same scene. And just so you know, each one of those exposures was one stop apart. And Photoshop is going to take all three of those exposures, and it's going to create a 32-bit image using the best exposed area in each one of the individual exposures. So here we can see each one of these exposures down in the lower left, and it turns out that I actually was wrong. These are each two stops apart. So we have our three different exposures, and it's combining it in the center area here in the image preview. And by default, this usually comes up to convert the image to 16-bit, and you have a number of different sliders. But I know the camera raw sliders better than I know these sliders, and I have a little bit more control using camera raw because I can make local adjustments, and all of these would be global adjustments. So instead of converting the image to 16-bit, I'm going to leave this set to 32-bit and take advantage of the new option to complete the toning in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm also going to remove any ghosts in case maybe the clouds moved between each one of those exposures. Now I'll go ahead and select Tone in ACR. That's going to keep this file in 32-bit. It's also going to convert that 32-bit image into a smart object, which then will enable me to use ACR as a smart filter. And you can see that I'm actually immediately taken to the Camera Raw dialog. So here if I wanted to go in and maybe increase the shadows to reveal a little bit more detail, or if I wanted to take down the highlights, I can do that using the same tools that I'm comfortable with because I was either using the Develop module in Lightroom or I've used Camera Raw in Photoshop. Of course, I don't have to be limited with just the basic panel. If I wanted to go over and make some additional changes, we could do that here using the tone curve. And not only could I make a change to RGB, but of course we could go into each individual channel if I wanted to. We could also convert the image to grayscale if necessary, or we can use the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. In fact, I will select my targeted adjustment tool here, and let's target the hue for a minute. You'll notice if I click and drag left to right, we can change the reds and oranges. I simply want to make them a little bit more towards the red here. 
Then I also might want to change, for example, the saturation. So again, I can either select the saturation tab here, or we can just change the saturation here by using the keyboard shortcut with my targeted adjustment tool. So you'll notice really you just hold down the Option Command and Shift or Alt Control Shift plus either H for hue, S for saturation, or L for luminance. So I'm going to increase the saturation a little bit by clicking and dragging to the right on the red, and I'll also increase the saturation here in my yellows. At the same time, if I wanted to decrease the saturation of the blue, I would click and drag to the left. Now, I want to go ahead and switch to the luminance, so I'll use that keyboard shortcut, basically Command Option Shift L or Control Alt Shift L, and then I'm going to click and drag again in the sky to just darken it down a bit. All right, so let's say we've made all the changes that we want. We'll go ahead and click OK, and you can see here it is without the camera raw as a filter, so this is my original 32-bit image, and this is after processing with camera raw. Of course, one of the great things about using camera raw as a smart filter is that you can go in and make additional changes to this. So if I want to do that, all I need to do is double click where it says camera raw filter. That will bring up the camera raw dialog box. And let's say we want to go in and maybe make a selective adjustment. You can see here that I have access to my adjustment brush, to my graduated filter, and to my radial filter. So let's make a slight adjustment using the adjustment brush. I'm going to just take the exposure down a little bit and maybe increase the contrast and maybe also increase a little bit of clarity right here in the sky area. We'll just paint over this area here. And if I want to get closer to the edge of the building, I can turn on auto mask. This way I don't have to be quite as precise. Uh, Camera Raw is actually going to do the work for me so that I don't go over with the brush into the building. If I want to preview what I've done, we can just toggle that on and off. So not a huge change, but just a slight adjustment there. Excellent. I'm going to return back to the hand tool just for a moment so that I can get my basic panel. And then I'm just going to increase the clarity a little bit to make it a little bit sharper, and maybe just a little bit of increase in saturation for the overall image. Again, when I click OK, because this is a smart filter being applied to a smart object, all of these changes are non-destructive, and we can go in and edit these as many times as we want. And of course, we're not limited to just using one smart object, right? If I wanted to duplicate this layer because maybe there was a portion of my image that I just couldn't quite get right using just one layer, I could duplicate it, get that area correct, and then use a layer mask to paint in and out where I want that second layer. All right, excellent. Let's take one more look at a different image that might give you maybe some more ideas of when Camera Raw could be useful as a smart filter. So I will return back to Lightroom, and we will just open this image here. I want to open the original so that we get all of the layers. Now, if I wanted to maintain the ultimate quality, it would probably be better if I went back to the rock image. You can see there's a top rock here and a bottom rock here. Um, if I wanted to make changes to these, I could go back to my original JPEG file or my original RAW file and reprocess them. But I think we all know that sometimes you get to a certain point in your project and maybe there's a deadline looming, and so you really don't have time to go back and get those original um, files. Or in a case like this, maybe I just want to make a really slight adjustment and I want to make that slight adjustment to both of these layers. Well, this is another great reason to be using Camera Raw as a filter. All right, I'll go ahead and select both of the layers, and then I'll go to the Filter menu, and I'll convert these for Smart Filters. So once I've converted both of those layers into a single Smart Filter, now I can apply Camera Raw to both of the layers at one time, but obviously not apply it to the background. So we'll go back to Filter, come back down to Camera Raw as a filter. And what I want to do here is I want to increase the highlights a little bit, and maybe the overall exposure as well. So let's do a little bit of exposure and a little bit more highlights here. And I also want to kind of soften it a bit. So I'm actually going to take the clarity slider down a little bit. You can see if I take it to the right, it gets a lot more contrasty. It looks sh really super sharp. But I actually want to back off on that, give it kind of more of a softer, more dreamy look. And I'll click OK. Of course, that's a non-permanent 
change, right? This is all non-destructive editing. And in fact, if I decide, well, maybe I like the camera raw filter around the edge, but not really in the center, you'll know that because I'm using a smart object, we have a smart filter here. I can go ahead and grab my paintbrush, paint with black in that smart filter mask, and just paint out the effect there in the center. In fact, I can do a lot more than just paint in the mask. You'll notice to the right of the camera raw filter, there's an icon. If I double click on that, you'll see here that I can change not only the blend mode, but also the opacity. So maybe I wanna change this to just lighten or maybe I wanna change this to overlay. You can see that's a much more dramatic effect. So maybe we'll come down to soft light and just kind of decrease the opacity a bit. When I click OK, you can see now that this camera raw filter is only affecting the very edges of the rock, making them a little bit lighter and giving them a little bit more of a dreamlike quality. Excellent, so you can see how Camera Raw as a filter can help you not only process your HDR images, but it can also help you when you're further down your workflow and you're working in Photoshop and you wanna make a change such as clarity that's only found in Camera Raw without going back to your original images. My name is Julianne Cost, thanks for joining me.